Hey, happy Tuesday, besties and bosses. I'm so looking forward to jamming with you today. We've got a topic that is one of my favorite topics because we're gonna be talking about ceiling like an artist, which may or may not, you might've heard that concept before, what I mean by that, creating consistent content, how you can have that create creative, original, consistent content convert for you. We're gonna be talking about creativity, some of my favorite, favorite topics to jam on. So it should be a very fun conversation and hopefully a slightly different lens for you. Before we dive into today's conversation, a couple announcements. So if you join me live today, we are doing a giveaway and in theme, since we're talking content, I will be giving away one copy of my self-study course content that stands out in sales. This is a five-part course that has helped clients of mine before even hiring me make 10K months from leveraging their content. I think it's a really good one. If you just drop me an emoji, say hi, let me know you're here. While we are live, we're gonna pick a live winner today, then we'll select a winner and at the end of the live stream, we'll notify you. So that is our giveaway today, and I'll make sure I remind y'all through the live. And then based on today's topic, I'm actually doing an industry chat, an Instagram industry chat tomorrow at 9 a.m. on Instagram. If you don't follow me on Instagram, my Instagram account is at Kim Market Singer. It's simply my name. I can drop that link down after I go live today. I've been doing these from time to time and not as a regular scheduled thing, but just when I have someone that I want to have more of an industry conversation around. And tomorrow we are going to have the owner, um, Amy, I'm gosh, I'm going to hopefully not pronounce her last name incorrectly. It's Amy Neesom. She is the owner of Artful Contracts. She is a trademark and business lawyer. And we're going to be chatting a little bit more about copying copycats and how to protect your original creative work. I think this is something as business owners, for anyone who is putting out original content, you have IP, you have intellectual property. And I think this is something we honestly don't talk enough about in our space. And I can speak to it today from a very different lens in terms of what's copying, what's not copying, how to approach this, how to create original content. But I think it'd be really helpful to have this conversation with someone who is a lawyer and can speak to this from a legal perspective. And we're gonna dive into this. We have a couple of different lenses. You know, Know how to approach this, what to do if someone's copying your work, how to protect your work legally. So I'd love to have you join me. That'll be at 9 a.m. tomorrow on my Instagram account, and we'll make sure we have the replay live there. And if you're on my email list, um, that'll go out next Friday to our weekly roundup as well. So those are the announcements. And obviously, if you're here, say hi. Again, you'll be entered to win. And I also just love to know who's here. This is a conversation in particular. Always, I wanna have this as a conversation with you and I do these for you. But let me know if you have questions around this. I want this to be super valuable for you. And I think this is one of those topics that I think is really relevant for pretty much every business owner. So let's dig in. So the reason I wanted to have this conversation, so we're talking about Steal Like an Artist, how to create consistent content that converts online. And I think one of the things that that I know I hear from clients all the time is how, um, hey Sarah, nice to have you, hey, hey, back. One of the things I know comes up and just as you're watching now in the replay, I'd love to hear from you how many of you A, are creating content in your business as a part of your marketing or your sales process. Most of us who are leveraging the online space are creating content of some kind, even if you're not creating content for your, um, Marketing, one of the examples I used in the email is I've been creating content, gosh, for probably 20 years now as an actress. What did I do? I created content. That is creating content. And I had to create content and now in business, that's what I'm doing. So I think it's just interesting for everyone first and foremost, even if you don't consider yourself creative or a content creator or identify that way to just pause for a moment and realize most likely if we're engaging here, if you have a business of some kind, if you're making money from your business, your work, I consider entrepreneurs artists because you're creating something out of nothing. But in some way, you are most likely creating some form of content in some way. And I think that's helpful to identify, again, because I just think so often, we talked about this on last week's live stream, the importance of identity. I think so often, one of the hurdles can be starting to see yourself as a creator, as a creative, as a content creator, as opposed to almost like seeing that as a check checklist, check mark on something you have to do. And then what I find for those of you who are leveraging content in your marketing strategy, what I find happens so often for clients, I mean, you can tell me how if this feels true or not, but first of all, there's the like, what the hell do I talk about all the time? Um, how do I stay consistent? How do I come up with enough ideas to keep putting stuff out there? Um, like, I think there can just be a lot that comes up around what do I share? How do I keep coming up with creative ideas and how do I do this consistently? And as someone who has, I've literally put out content pretty much, I'd say every day for the last over 
over seven years, often many times per day, we have multiple pieces of content. For example, today, this is a piece of content, right? I'm live. We have multiple posts going out here. We have multiple posts going out on Instagram. We have videos going out on Instagram. We have the podcast that went on Monday. We have we have multiple pieces of content going out on most days. Maybe they're, I don't know, maybe over the years when I first started my business and I didn't have a team, maybe there was a day or two we didn't have content go out. But pretty much we've had content go out every day for years. And this is all original content, meaning it is original from me. We might repurpose something, but this isn't content we are borrowing from from someone else. And I think when people hear that, or when now you're starting to do the same in your business and you're starting to create a body of work, I think that can feel very overwhelming. I think it can get people in their heads. And I think it can feel very confusing as to what do I talk about again? How do I keep coming up with ideas and what do I share? And I know because clients will tell me this, what can sometimes happen then is what do we do when we're stuck for ideas and we feel stressed? We we scroll online to get a hit of inspiration. We kind of look to see like, well, what is so-and-so who's successful doing? What are they talking about? How can I take what they're talking about? Maybe kind of write the same thing. Um, I'm not calling anyone out at all, but I think this can be a common thing, right? We see, we don't even realize we're doing this. We can see a post and then kind of like try to change a couple words and put that out. Or like you've got a live stream coming up and you don't know what to talk about. And so you're like, what did so-and-so say? And you kind of like borrow the idea and you put that out yourself or you're writing a sales page and you're like, I don't know how to write a sales page. So you've got like three people you really like, you are like, what did they say? And you're trying to do that thing who, who didn't do this in high school, right? Where you're like, I'm writing a research paper and I've got a research book in front of me and I'm just like not copying. I'm just taking the words and just like re, instead of um, the cat ran across the street, I'm saying the feline walked across the cobblestone and it's like yeah you're pretty much saying the cat walked across the street i don't know why that example came up for me i'm also rolling my chair is rolling here right and i i'm I'm saying this again not to call anyone out but just to say i think this is very normal and i think this happens a lot when you don't trust yourself to come up with ideas you don't know how to come up with ideas or when we don't know where the lines are so we're going to talk all about that today i want to talk about the difference between copying and stealing like an artist and what that even means and that's a term from austin cleon i'm going to talk a little bit about my perspective on copying and i bet it's not what you think and i think this might just be helpful to normalize for everyone and then i'm going to share some of my favorite creative hacks to come up with creative ideas in a way that is stealing like an artist instead of copying i think i have four or five of those i mean i could I could share creative hacks all day long. Creativity and creative thinking is one of my favorite topics. Side note, because you know I love my side notes. I think this is actually really fascinating. I was just listening to the Huberman Lab podcast. If anyone doesn't know what I'm talking about, he's a... um, He's a scientist at Stanford, I believe, but he does really great scientific podcasts. And a lot of it is also based on brain research and what's going on in the brain. And he did one on creative thinking that I found fascinating because they basically have distilled creative thinking to two types of thinking in the brain, divergent thinking and convergent thinking. Like there's actually a science behind this and what's going on in the brain when we have creative ideas. And I won't geek out on this too much now, but I think it's just very helpful to understand that and the way he described creative creativity I think this will be very helpful for our conversation today with seeing like an artist, but really creativity is having a new novel idea or concept that is also useful, that either helps us um, understand something about human nature or about life in some new way or understand it better or has some utilization, some function. A movie can have a function in that it entertains us, but it's something novel and new that still has that utility and function, helps us understand something more. And I say that because as we're talking about content and as we're talking about copying versus stealing like an artist and as we're talking about some of those creative hacks, I think understanding what creativity even means and what we even want to think about when we're looking at creating original content through this lens can be useful because otherwise what happens is the pendulum can swing Right? And if we're so worried about, I don't want to copy and I want to make sure I'm original because original content is important, we can almost swing so far and think creativity just means just do something different, just be novel for the sake of being novel. I feel like I talk about this in so many different ways. And we want to remember actual creativity and a content that's going to convert is yes, doing something novel, doing something different, finding a new original concept, way to create your content, but that still has that utility, that still has that function, that still has that value for someone. And it's that intersection that is then what is going to be considered creativity in your content. 
And I just find it fascinating, the divergent and convergent thinking. Divergent thinking is basically that ability to sift through all of your memories and life experience and to find different ideas and pull them together in new ways. And then the convergent piece is more the taking those ideas and being able to test them, to basically pressure test them that they do have that functionality. And it's all it's all driven by the dopamine centers in our brain, which is good to know because that is where some of the creativity hacks can come from if you're working with your dopamine. Anyway, I'm not going to go too far down that rabbit hole because I just want to go on a geek out on brain science. And today we're talking about stealing like an artist, which is a completely different thing. So copying versus stealing like an artist. And why does this even matter? So what we're talking about here with creativity and why I wanted to bring that to the conversation first is I, I do just want to like just have kind of the general concept here you don't have to agree with me but from my perspective as someone who's been in business for seven years as someone who runs a booked out multi six-figure business that has generated a million in revenue in the last four years 700k in the last two years from one-on-one alone and has supported clients at every stage of business from brand new and helped them scale to six figures a multi six figures and has helped clients who are already making two million plus a year with big teams what i have seen to be true again from my perspective you don't have to agree with me but original content creativity these are two two key pieces that go into the business success sustainability money making pie if we're going to make a success pie right so having original content and having that consistent original content so not just something original like once every so and like often but having those consistent touch points to build relationships through original content again I, there are pl- I have plenty of clients who don't leverage, not plenty, I've had maybe one or two clients over seven years who don't leverage content, but you don't have to create content, but I do see this as a huge driver in your ability to market, to start and build new relationships and to create those conversions that turn into clients and money. And then the original piece here and the consistent piece are the two levers that I see really make a difference. The original piece is that creativity. It's something that is original to you versus we could all just have derivatives of, I mean, and this is happening a lot, unfortunately, in our online space. And I think we're just going to see this more with AI and things like chat GPT, where we are seeing derivatives and copies of copies of copies of copies, right? We are seeing someone has an idea and a piece of content, and then hundreds of people are basically taking that concept and saying it again. And it's technically original, but it's not really original to them. It's not really, there's no real creative or differential spin. I've been talking a lot about blue ocean strategy, and there's, they're really, it's more that red ocean in terms of everyone saying the same thing that's fine that'll still build relationships and that can still convert in your business but what i find really helps people stand out and what really blows businesses up and what we've been talking about different ways over the last couple months here is having that more original creative stamp on your content consistently is what helps you to create that blue ocean i think we talk about this in words it's words that sell blue ocean strategy teaches us that the way to beat the competition is not to try to beat the competition. And it's basically to create a blue ocean, meaning you're not fighting people in bloody waters. And what this means when it comes to content is the way to beat the competition is not to try to copy someone else. It's to see how can I really leverage my original perspective, my creativity to put out something new and different and to do so consistently because that we all know consistency is what creates results in business. You know, a whole conversation on consistency. Consistency doesn't have to mean perfection, but it is it is those those two pieces that I really see content or what makes content work online. And then with that, because coming up with original ideas and coming up and doing so consistently can feel tough for all the reasons we just talked about and feel pressurized. I think this is when people unintentionally get into the copycat world. I this is my perspective and the way I look. I've been copied multiple times. I've, I've literally opened up my feed and seen people I know and people I'm close to where I'm like, wait, wait, I'm confused. That I just wrote that or I just wrote that a week ago. Or I've I, and I, I've seen this, I've had And this isn't, again, not to call anyone out, but I've had this happen in so many different ways over the years. And my perspective and what I really and genuinely believe is I don't think anyone is copying on purpose. Well, I think some people are copying on purpose, but I think the majority of people, and I know people who are in my world, I think some people don't even realize that they are copying. We're going to... I promise I'm going to get to the steal like an artist and creative um, process piece, but I do think this is important because if you are putting out 
original consistent content there is i think one of the fears is what happens if someone copies me and that's why i want to have that conversation um tomorrow with amy about protecting your ip and i think that can, and the the truth is people probably will or they will borrow and have some of your ideas and so i think we want to understand first and foremost why that happens and and my perspective really is most people are good people and most people are not intentionally ripping off anyone's content or anyone's idea i think a lot of times what happens when it is something where like what i've seen before and like that that's my post minus maybe four words that have been changed. It's like what I say, the cat walked across the street and it's like the feline crawled across the cobblestone or whatever I said there. I didn't say crawled, but whatever those two sentences are. I, I've literally seen multiple pieces of content of my own. Like they, they just changed four words. So they changed two sentences and huge chunks of paragraphs are the same. That is copying. Um, and for, I'll be interested to see what Amy says tomorrow, but when you're taking huge pieces of content like that and just copying it and maybe changing a word or two here, but you're taking paragraphs, you're taking sentences, you're taking whole ideas, that's not only copying, that is stealing. That is technically illegal. Again, I'll be interested to see what Amy says in terms of repercussions, especially if something isn't trademarked, but, but that is, again, not to call anyone out, but more so that we can have a conversation around how to be an integrity in the online space and how to run our businesses and to be creative thinkers and also so you know what boundaries to hold on on your side that is stealing that is technically illegal from my understanding that is not stealing like an artist that is stealing period that's not the good kind of stealing and as a content creator as a creative as a business owner those are situations where i very much want to uphold my boundaries and have a conversation and ask that to be taken down and again we'll have that conversation with amy tomorrow to see more with the legal legal um steps you can you can take and how you can protect your work and as someone who is going to hold those boundaries and is going to have those conversations and wants to honor and protect my work and rightfully thinks I should when it's my IP, I also can have compassion in the perspective. And I think this is just something for us, you don't have to have my perspective, but something I always think about is I really don't think most people do are, are bad. I think most people who do things that are not ideal or are doing something like copying a piece of content do so because they're stressed out because they're feeling desperate because they don't know what to do because they can't come up with an idea because maybe they don't have the tools because they're feeling insecure because they see something they meet, hear me saying the success i've had and they're like well that worked for kim maybe that'll work for me as well right i think sometimes people are also um not even realizing this. I mean, I think when you're copying and just pasting, you realize what you're doing. But I think what happens a lot of times as well, when there's more of the gray area copying, I think people get inspired and they hear something and they don't realize how little of a shift they've made. Sarah, I don't know if you're still live, but um, the thought that comes to me, we were, we know each other from acting. We were in an acting class. And do you remember when we had that acting class where, um, and I cannot even think of our teacher's name, but we would have um, the class where we would do a redirect. You do a scene and then you'd get direction and you'd have to do the scene all over again. And as an actor, you would think like you'd get the direction to like play it bigger and be louder and be more angry. And you would feel like you took that direction and you like went to a level 10 angry. And then our teacher would turn to the class and kind of ask everyone how much of how much do we see someone actually make a shift from the original scene to the direction they were given. And he would ask the actor how much of a shift they felt they made from their original scene to the direction given. And the actor would usually be like, oh, that was like, I felt like it was a, maybe a 10. And as an audience or as those of us watching, a lot of times we'd be like, that looked exactly the same, or maybe it was like a one degree shift. And I share that as an example, because I think that happens a lot when people unintentionally copy. I think it's easy to get inspired by something and to think, oh, this was so great. I'm going to make it my own and I'm going to totally like take it in a different direction. It's not copying. And it feels because you're so excited and it feels like, cause you've like then gone and typed it out yourself or gone and done a live stream about it. It feels like it's really different. And what can happen a lot, and this is just the perspective I try to take when I see things copied, is it feels like it's really different, but it's that experience we would have acting where actually the difference is maybe a t like a half a degree. It just feels different because you're then sitting down to type instead of like copying and pasting, you're actually having to write it out or you're taking it from memory and you've rewritten a couple words or you're you know regurgitating on a live stream. 
And so I think that's just helpful perspective. If you're someone who gets copied, right, or if that's something you're worried about, if you're worried about putting out original ideas because you think someone might copy you, I, th I think it can just be helpful to always have compassion for, again, you don't have to take my perspective, but the way that makes it a lot easier for me to have a boundary conversation and to approach someone about something like this is, again, to have that compassion to see where someone might be coming from and to also see, like, who knows? Maybe there's times I've done that in my past. Like, how can I also have compassion for myself and see most people aren't intentionally being a-holes they are stressed or don't even they're inspired and don't even realize they're not making a shift but i think we want to see that is copying stealing like an artist and what i think is the way we can start to think about how to come up with consistent creative ideas and how to consistently put out content that converts and how to take inspiration and how to take inspiration and not be a copycat essentially and how to keep adding something new to the conversation in an online space where it feels like everything has been said, and I think we often hear like there's nothing new, is what Austin Kleon calls stealing like an artist. So stealing like an artist, um, and then I have one more thought I want to speak to real quick on the copying part, but stealing like an artist, and I actually pulled this, so this is from Austin Kleon, this is not Austin, uh, my words, but um, he basically, what he's saying is he does not mean steal or plagiarize or to skim or rip off, which is what we were just talking about, but to study, credit, remix, mash, and transform. Creative work builds on what came before and thus nothing is completely original. And I'm going to break break that down quite a bit. If you don't know Austin Kleon's work, he has a book called Literally Steal Like an Artist, Show Your Work, and... Um, keep going, I think is the other one. He has a trilogy. They're they're short. He has some really great graphics in it. So you can I I like the um his drawings in them, but they're also an an audio and you could probably listen to it super quickly. But I think it's it's great for anyone who is creating content. I think just some really great concepts in there. All concepts you've probably heard before, but I think really great concepts and um I think he does a really great job of modeling what it means to feel like an artist. And I think it might it might be just a nice read for anyone. Again, super easy read. So that's what it means to steal like an artist. So to steal like an artist is not stealing like what we were talking about copying. To steal like an artist, there is an art to stealing in this way. And what this means is to, again, study, credit, remix, mash, and transform, which I am going to um, break down a little bit here. And this is, I think, where you can have an endless stream of ideas. I think I shared in the email in the notes section on my phone. I legitimately have over 25,000 notes. That is not an exaggeration. I keep having to call them and delete them and put them together because I have so many. I'm an idea generating machine, but part of it is because I steal like an artist really, really well. <laughs> and to, to pat myself on the back, I still like an artist really well, but but I think I do, and I will I will break that down a little bit as we're talking about this concept. Because I'm going to go through a couple ways you can steal like an artist, how you can leverage this, how you can think about this, so that you're coming up with those consistent, original content ideas that convert online. This is why I think sometimes we get confused also with if someone is copying you or not. And what I think is not copying is stealing like an artist. And part of what stealing like an artist can also mean is if you have a concept or idea and suddenly you see 25 people talking about the same thing in different ways. I do think sometimes there are just things in the zeitgeist that are on the tops of everyone's minds. And this is like a whole nother conversation in terms of like source, if you believe in source energy. I think, um, oh, what's her name? Gilbert talks about this in Big Magic. We're reading a book by Rick Rubin. I think he talks about this a little bit. But I think we want to normalize that some ideas are going to be in the zeitgeist. That is not copying or even necessarily stealing like an artist. It is normal for multiple people to talk about similar things. I mean, ChatGPT, for example, I don't even know if that's an idea in the zeitgeist, but lots of people are going to be, I think, talking about things like copying, like what I'm talking about here, or about original content, or about storytelling, certain things that get brought up because of an event or because of something that's happening in our world. And I think it's really important for, because otherwise it's very easy to see something like that was my idea they're copying me and to get very um protective of ideas or to accuse someone of something that they're not doing and to see that just that is just a very normal thing that happens i think the other normal thing that happens especially if you are someone who is a thought leader and i think this is un important to understand so you're not hoarding your ideas you're not scared to share them so you both know what is copying so that you can hold that boundary and speak to it and 
have a conversation with someone that is appropriate, but also understand there is a whole world that isn't really copying. And as a thought leader, you're going to also put ideas out into essentially the zeitgeist and people are going to take those and they're going to steal like an artist. And I don't personally think that's copying. I'll be interested to see what Amy says tomorrow. But I think that is part of if you're a thought leader, if you're a teacher, if you're a coach, if you're someone sharing original ideas, Austin Cleon, for example, sharing Steel Like an Artist, I want to quote him because Steel Like an Artist is his concept, but some of the ideas he's sharing within that are lessons that I don't think necessarily need me to quote or to say where they came from, and it's not plagiarism for me to plagiarism for me to speak to them. They are concepts that are that I've been learning and that I can then share and teach on, and that is just part of what happens when we're when we're learning from from someone, and that's also going to happen when you're sharing an idea. Hopefully that makes sense there. But I know clients of mine will sometimes worry if we're talking about something on a coaching call or if they're taking my sales course, for example, and they're getting some ideas from that, that they're copying if they now teach about sales or if they now talk about sales. And that's not copying. That is learning something and then making it your own. Like that becomes then your your IP. That is very, very different than copying. Just like having an idea that is kind of universal in the zeitgeist I have one client where we we tend to have very similar content topics and I know she's not copying me because I know I come up with content topics, I don't know, sometimes a month in advance and I know she doesn't know what I've come up with and she comes up with her content topics in advance. I think it's more just likely that we are in similar worlds and certain things are in the zeitgeist so similar ideas are going to come to the surface. That's not copying or stealing like an uh, stealing like an artist. So hopefully that makes sense. Stealing like an artist though. What, what I want to talk through today because I think this will the other part of this here, so we understand that difference. If you want to create original, creative, consistent content without all of the pressure, I think the concept of stealing like an artist can be a really helpful frame to fire up that creativity and give you an endless amount of new ideas. So if I break this down, the first piece here that Austin Cleon says is study. So study, credit, remix, mashup, and transform. What Austin Cleon talks about, and this is, if anyone has read The Medici Effect, I'm reading it right now, I am obsessed, it is giving me life. I'm sure you'll hear a lot about this, but The Medici Effect talks about this as, as well. I'm sure Rick Rubin talks about this. I can't wait to like chew on that book more. I'm clearly like very much geeking out on, on all the creative things right now. But what I'm seeing as a um, general foundation for anyone who's speaking about putting out prolific creative work, having original idea, being consistent with that is to first study and what that means and how Austin Kleon talks about this and the way that the Medici effect talks about this is for you to have something original, to have that consistent content and new ideas. We first need to study and understand the foundations of anything. For me to perform a scene acting and for me to get direction to do it differently, I first have to study acting, know the craft, know the rules that I'm going to then break. I need to learn my lines and learn the scene and really learn that foundation, study that scene so that I can then have a director tell me to do it in a complete completely different wacky way. Otherwise, I'm not going to be able to effectively do that. For you to create really great consistent original content and to have original innovative ideas in your content, you first need to study and have a foundation. It's it, it's sort of like for anyone who writes, I, I break intentionally break grammar rules all the time. I can do that intentionally because I first learned the rules of grammar to then break them. Otherwise, it's just a hot mess um, if we don't understand that foundation. Painters, right? Painters who create something amazing and brilliant and new first probably studied some of the greats and studied by making mimics of some of the famous paintings we know. A mimic of a famous painting is not original. It is not new. It is not creative, right? Um, And I think that's helpful to see a mimic. If you're making a painting of another painting, that is not considered creative, right? What we were talking about from the Huberman lab, because that is not novel and it is not um, creating something new and it is not something that is then giving us utility because that the original already exists. The original painting is creative. So I think understanding like that is what any artist would do. First, they would study and learn the foundations. If I was going to become a painter, first, I would probably copy some work right? Not to go out and sell and say, this is mine, but as a way to learn the rules, to learn my skill set, so that I could then go out and break the rules. It's just really hard to break the rules effectively and to be creative if we don't have that foundation. 
So I'm sharing that because I think so often in our space, it's really interesting actually, I think our space where we like both, like so many people don't want to like learn foundations of things and want to hate on foundations and making their own rules, but then also um, then feel rudderless and end up unintentionally copying. And again, I'm not calling anyone out. I just find it very fascinating. And I think what's really interesting is the best way to be original, to be creative consistently, to have that kind of content that you're putting out consistently that grabs people's eyeballs because you're not in that red ocean because you don't sound like everyone else and you don't sound like a rendition of like 45 other people saying the same thing is actually to first study and to learn the foundations because once you know the rules you know the rules to break once you have a foundation you know what you can fuck with in a way that works really well um and i know there's gonna be someone hearing this thinking that this means like go study and to get a degree or a certification and something else that's not what i mean at all this this just means um Know, know the foundations that work, because if you know what works, um, I think in the Medici effect, he uses the example of an architect. And, you know, an architect needs to first know the foundations of what is going to make a building sturdy so that it doesn't literally topple over and kill people so that the architect can then go be a creative thinking and original and do something new and different and innovative to break the rules. But the foundation of what is going to keep that that property or that building structurally safe and sound still needs to be there. So that's what we're talking about. Um, when Austin Klee is talking about this, he's also talking about like study the grades because that's where you're, that is where you're going to steal like an artist because stealing like an artist is to study first. And then what Austin Cleon's really big on and that I'm really, you've probably heard me, my, some of my clients teases me that I'm always saying to give credit where credit is due. So the next thing, study credit. Credit is the next piece. So there's nothing wrong with studying and having an idea that you love and using it in your content if you're giving credit where credit is due. For those, we were talking about the research paper earlier on today. Um, if you were writing a research paper and you wanted to use, like the best thing, if I was writing, I, I come from the academic world. I almost went to get my PhD in psychology. I studied that when I was in school. We had to write massive papers. What did we do? I found all the research to prove my hypothesis and my thesis, and I credited the shit out of that. If I didn't have enough sources, I actually couldn't get a good grade on my paper. And so I actually think this is really helpful for us to think about for creative original content that we're putting out consistently, you're actually probably going to want to study and have a really nice foundation to pull from and you can use what you learn. The difference is giving credit where credit is due. I've probably on this live stream referenced, I don't know, two, three, I referenced Blue Ocean Strategy, I referenced the Medici Effect, I referenced Austin Cleon, I referenced my old acting teacher, I know I referenced my coach a lot, like that's four or five Right, we're, we're talking a bunch of things here that are not my new ideas. They are, that's me stealing like an artist and I'll explain what the rest of stealing like an artist is, right? I'm just, I know the foundation, I'm pulling from those and I'm just giving credit where credit is due. And so I offer that for anyone, feel free. Feel free to, to leverage the ideas from other people and to study them, to make your content original and to weave those in just give just give credit like that's the whole thing and what i think is helpful i think what happens in our space is people are so scared to give credit because i think they're worried it's going to then seem like it wasn't their idea which it's not if you need to give credit and or that that weakens um their piece of content because someone's going to i think there's such a scarcity mindset that if i share if i share that i did not come up with revenue share and that i stole like an artist and that that is an idea that my coach like i learned that from my coach and that is how i pay my coach and that is what i learned from literally how i paid my agents acting and how we got paid in the advertising world if i say that i think there's this fear where it's like well then people will think you're not legit or they'll want to go work with your coach or with someone else and what i want to offer is a there's more than enough to go around b it's stealing if you're not giving credit where credit is due so don't share something if you don't want to share where it comes from um, that directly. But I also think that simply adds credibility and social proof. If you write a research paper in college and you don't give credit and source credit, 
you're either going to seem like you're plagiarizing or there's going to be no weight or validity to your paper because there's nothing to back up your idea. You are then just a college student who says they have a brilliant idea. If you have a brilliant idea and you back it up with 20 sources that you cite, suddenly you have credibility and you're backing up your idea. And I, I think there's just such an opportunity for us in the online space to stop having such a scarcity mindset and instead see there's enough to go around. But also this is literally what can add to your credibility. I don't think because I'm sharing blue ocean strategy, that it is not my idea, that that is someone else's concept that I literally quote on my sales page, that that diminishes me. I think that just gives more validity to some of my ideas because I have source. I'm saying, look at all of these things that back up my ideas as opposed to just, I think I have great ideas and you should trust me. Sarah says the foundation that is in consistent use can, and then they um, can be built upon to create new tangible product. And that product can be, but yeah, credit, credit, credit. Um, yes, I think what you're saying is exactly, and the rest of Steel Like an Artist is exactly what you're talking about here. So you're, you're feeding me in beautifully because it's having the foundation and then making it original on you essentially, but exactly, credit, 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 credit. Like that's, that's the whole, that's the whole thing. And like, there, there's nothing wrong. Like, I can't, uh, y'all watch him now and on the replay, you have to let me know. When I credit things, do you suddenly think, oh my gosh, Kim doesn't know what she's doing? I mean, I, I can't imagine that. I think if anything, it's like, oh wait, maybe she's not just making ideas and pulling stuff from her ass. Maybe like there's actually some thought put into this and there's other people who have also put thought and research into this that might be backing up this theory or idea. Also, it's just stealing if we don't do that. If I claim blue ocean strategy or steal like an artist is my concept, that is just lying and that is just stealing and that is just plagiarism and that is just illegal. So there's also that part of it. But I think starting to see for everyone here, if there's like this worry of like, I need to hold on to my ideas. And like, I think this is also why we hoard our ideas because we're so worried people won't credit them. I think just again, remembering there's more than enough to go around. Ideas and creativity beget ideas and creativity. This is a whole nother conversation, but quantity, not quality of ideas is what leads to innovation and really big creative breakthroughs. But also the more we're sharing and quoting, the more you're going to add evidence and social proof and back up your concepts and new ideas, which is only going to help your help you come up with new original ideas. Okay, so we're talking about study and credit and then Sarah fed me so beautifully. The other part here of Steel Like an Artist is we're not writing research papers online. Like, please no one write content that is just, this is what I did my first year in business. If you go scroll back to the beginning of my blog post, um, I would like come up with an idea. And I actually think, I, I actually think they were pretty good. Um, I would come up with an idea and a concept, but then I would just research the heck and it was like, I just wrote the world's best research paper ever. Um, we, we don't need to write research papers online. Give credit where you need to, but this is not now everyone needs to go research every post they're writing. Please don't hear that. You'll never have consistent content going out. We want to hear your original ideas, but the way you can have consistent original ideas that convert and have that content going out over and over again. And the rest of the steal like an artist concept is study and give credit. But then this back half here is remix, mashup, and transform. So this is the part that I think of really when I think of stealing like an artist. And this is why I have 2,500 ideas in my phone and why I think it's so easy for me to always have content ideas is this part, the remix, mashup, and transform. So what that means is, yes, feel free to learn from people. Feel free to consume content. I would offer, and one of the things that really helps me, and one of the things that I think helps most creative thinkers and artists and business owners to truly steal like an artist and to truly have creative original ideas that help you to stand out and that help you to have that blue ocean is to also pull inspiration to steal like an artist to remix, mashup, and transform from art forms and from inspiration outside of your industry. So what I don't want to do all day, every day, like what I'm sharing here, I just shared two books that aren't business books at all, right? I want to pull from things. I talk about business. I, I don't want to just pull from, I mean, it's great for me to learn and study the business basics. I need that as that foundation, right? Like the architect needs to know how to build the foundation of a business, but I want to steal like an artist from from a wide tapestry of things that are different. And then this other part of Steel Like an Artist is then 
what we want to start to do, and this is where you can have the consistent ideas and the consistent content that converts really well, is to understand what is the conversation you want to have with your audience? What's the problem you're solving and the result you're delivering, right? What is the core concept we need to deliver as marketers? And then how can you feel like an artist? Yes, study credit, but how can you pull in new ideas? How can you pull from outside sources? How can you feel like an artist from your own history, from your own life, right? I talk about acting all the time. Time, I am stealing like an artist from my own story. How can you pull that in and start to create new mixes? And that's what Sarah was saying here. Whereas if we know the, um, uh, oh, I, did, I just seen your, I'm going to hear your, I just saw your contents. I'm going to uh, comment here. I'm going to see these contents in a second here. But if we have something that is an original idea and we start to layer in all of these different things and instead of a copy, right? Is if I have if I have a post and someone copies it, or like what we said, like just changes a couple words, that's copying. But if suddenly you have an idea and you studied the foundation and you watched a really great movie and you pulled from your personal story and you also listened or read a great book, like Steal Like an Artist, and suddenly you have four different things that are coming together and you can remix them and you can blend them up and you can do them differently, that's feeling like an artist. And that is the way I think that you can have consistent ideas and bring innovation in. And that's really what the Medici effect is all about, which is taking divergent backgrounds and that point of intersection and I think what can create some of the biggest innovation, that's what we're talking about when we say steal like an artist. And then you're no longer copying. Then you are that painter who learned the foundation, right? And it's like, they mimic some painting over here and they learned some, um, they learned how to do like, I don't, I don't know anything about art, like art terms, but they learned how to, I don't know, uh, draw the boxes and the cat over here and they learned some abstract art over here and some surrealism over here. And they took all of that and they blended it together and they came up with their own style. Sure, they're technically pulling from three different other people's styles, but they've just made their own. And that's the invitation for you with your content if you wanna have consistent ideas and consistent content. Okay, comments here and then I'm gonna share a couple other things. Um, Okay, Sarah said, yep. She said, no, I think it's help be helpful to know where the, the foundation is from. A thousand, a thousand percent. I think we're saying the same thing. A thousand percent. I think um, I think Austin Kleon even talks about this. What a gift it can be to tell people where the foundation is from. Because then if someone else wants to see like an artist and learn, they can also keep going going back to, um, like they can deepen their learning and education as well. And I think you were saying in terms of my response to saying like, do you think like it weakens me if I'm if I'm saying where where things are coming from. I think that's what that comment was too. Sarah says giving credit to me helps justify what you're talking about and leads to innovation and proof. Yes, amen. She says yes. You have to take from all walks, so to speak, making it your own and owning it and letting it grow. And that is so succinctly said. That thank you, Sarah. That is that is feeling like an artist. And this is how instead of feeling like, oh my gosh, what am I gonna write about next week? This is how it starts to become really easy to have consistent ideas for content and to have enough content because Yes, there's a strategy to content. Yes, there's a strategy to what's going to have your content convert. But the truth, truth is part of what allows your content to convert is also being consistent enough and showing up enough, right? Some of it is literally just the touch points and the relationship and showing up enough and sharing value enough. And again, I'm not saying there isn't more nuanced strategy and we've had other live streams and I have a whole course on that that I'm giving, giving away to someone today. So like, yes, of course there's that. And you can have the best content strategy in the world. You can have the best like technically converting piece of content, but if you're either copying it from someone else, which means it's their words and their energy. I mean, that's a whole nother thing about why copying just doesn't work that well. I don't want people copying my work for obvious reasons, but also I'm not super worried about it. So I know when someone copies my words, they're my words, they're my energy. Like there's a whole bunch that goes into conversions that has nothing to do with the words itself or literally everyone using the same strategies would be getting the same results. I, I know, and I also know one post is not a sales process make, so I don't get super concerned about it either. Like I'm not that worried about it like, outside of I wanna, you know, have a boundary around my work. Um, but I think the other piece is, is seeing that you can have the best strategy in the entire world, but if you're sharing something once a month, that's gonna take a long ass time to convert and to build an audience, right? If you're sharing consistently, it's what I was saying earlier, and this is not just me, this is literally study show this, it's not, 
quality of course matters, but quality comes from quantity, right? I became a better actor because I just kept showing up and acting and performing scenes. That quantity led to quality. I am a better content creator because I keep creating and some of my content's okay. And some of it is like a super winner. When I look at the posts of my Facebook group every week, not every single one of them is getting the same reach and same um, connection, right? That quantity leads to quality and that consistency is also what leads to conversions with your content as much as you know some of like making sure your messaging is on point which obviously you know i I care about so i think under understanding that and then seeing if you start to learn how to see like an artist this is going to help with your consistency because part of your job then is to become essentially in a creative idea generating machine and i don't mean that in like a hustle bro culture kind of a way or like now you have to like have a gazillion ideas and like making this sound stressful but i really think this is a muscle in the brain and i don't know if we have muscles in the brain but listening to huberman lab oh see there's another person i'm citing and giving credit to but listening to him talk about these two parts in the brain and how we can increase creative thinking i do think this is a a process that everyone can literally get better at and strengthen and i think the the consistent creativity and consistent idea generation is a big part of that and that's a big part that leads to your conversions um and feeling like an artist is just one way to not copy but to keep generating ideas and so what i find is if you're taking this idea of it's not stealing right i'm going to see like an artist instead and start playing with this approach and start playing with the approach of my job is to learn the foundation and to give credit and then to start to expand my mind to pay attention to inspiration from as many different places as possible so i can mix them up remix them mash them up. i almost think about it like an idea blender right i want what we're talking about today this live stream is literally an example of stealing like an artist and an idea blender i am taking a core concept and i am taking a core concept i want to talk about consistent content online and something i know is a problem for people, the copying part, and what I also know blocks people from showing up, which is being able to generate ideas, right? And I have just pulled from my own personal experience, my own story, and then so many different avenues. I basically created an idea smoothie, and now we have something original and new. I'm probably talking about this in a way that not everyone else online talking about business is, right? This is my original piece of content and idea, but it's nothing is new in what I'm saying and that I'm remixing, I am mashing up, I am transforming by pulling from that core studied foundation and then pulling in lots of inspiration and lots of different ideas to make something creative, original in you, right? Like that's a little bit of the Medici effect as well. Um, And I think when you play with it this way, what you start to see is you can start to get ideas for original content and consistent content everywhere. That's why I have so many notes in my phone because you also start to train your brain to, and this is what I'll share as we're closing, I'll just share a couple of my hacks for for how to start to pull those ideas from this whole steal like an artist concept. What you start to see then is when you have that foundation and you know the rules to break and you also know the concepts you want to talk about, I want to talk about content, for example. I know that is a core part of what we talk about, or I want to talk about sales. I want to talk about mindset, right? I know the core pillars in my content I'm going to talk about, and I can come up with consistent original ideas through the the strategy of stealing like an artist by keeping this in my mind. And then, again, one of my favorite hacks is if I know I have a live stream coming up and I want to talk, let's say I want to talk about sales and let's say um, I want to talk about sales through the uh, objections. I'm going to plant that thought in my mind and then I want to go and literally enjoy my life outside of business as much as possible with that in my mind and see what can fill in the gaps for what I want to talk about. You'll see sometimes like I think on our podcast this week, I brought in the Oscars and I was talking about the Oscars. What I was really talking about was not the Oscars. What I was really talking about was mindset and how to create a higher level of mind, which is a concept 
borrowed, stolen like an artist from Joe Dispenza, right? And I wanted to talk about the, um, it's a great podcast episode, I think. And I wanted to talk about how to think higher than your current thoughts and how to step in basically mindset and to step into a new belief level. And I borrowed from the Oscars and I borrowed from Joe Dispenza, right? I knew that that's something I wanted to talk about. And then I just started borrowing from other things. And so when I had that in mind, I watched the Oscars that fed me right? Steal like an artist. That meant I got to start remixing things and I could pull a little bit from that Oscars idea, a little bit from Joe Dispenza, a little bit from Kim and the concept I want to talk about, a little bit from probably a client conversation and suddenly create something new. And I created a new practice, a new exercise that's on the podcast that I don't know, maybe someone else does, but I've never seen someone share this specific exercise that I shared. It's a brand new exercise. It is something original, creative, and new borrowed from or inspired by a blend of a lot of different things so that is one of my favorite hacks and i think just seeing like that's the breakdown not to make it overly complicated or overly simple but that's how then you can start to have these new innovative creative ideas and do so consistently um sarah says yes love it idea smoothie um an idea smoothie is me stealing like an artist right that's my um I like like that you like that that's my original thought and idea but it's literally taking from austin cleon's idea of remixing and blending you may think of smoothie um Right, just so everyone can see here, right? Like nothing is new and everything can be new when we start to practice thinking this way. Um, my second favorite hack, I'm just gonna run through these quickly because I do think these are helpful because I know everyone gets stuck on how do I, like deadline is due me. I need to put something on Instagram today. I need to do a live stream. What the fuck do I talk about? How do I talk about it? My, um, I think I have a bite-sized biz lesson coming out tomorrow or the day after that is speaking to this. One of my other favorite hacks is, I call it, this is like, how is this like that? I think we did a podcast episode on that as well. But if I'm stuck on something and I know, I, and this is kind of stealing like an artist as well, if I, like I need to put out consistent content and I wanna talk about, let's say I want to talk about messaging, for example. Um, and I'm like, I can't think of something. I will just take random objects, this lip gloss, right? How is this like that? How is this lip gloss like messaging? How is this lip gloss like the message I want to share, right? And I will challenge my mind to come up with new new ideas. And this is essentially stealing like an artist because what Austin Kleon is talking about is taking and blending lots of different things together. Um, so I might be like, well, I could think about um, you know two different lip glosses and how one is just like buy this lip gloss it's good and one talks about how this lip gloss has really beautiful organic ingredients and when you put it on it's super smooth and silky and it makes it feel like um, you're making out with your husband every time you put on that lip gloss and it also makes your lips I don't know luscious and shine horrible messaging there, but I could use that as inspiration for a creative idea and then talk about the importance of how that original messaging, right? Like how, if I'm talking about how my lip gloss is like, what's going to keep your husband turned on and freshen up your marriage, how that is going to help sell my lip gloss more than just saying buy my lip gloss because it's, it's sparkly and pretty. Um, silly example there, right? But this is like, that is that example or how is this like that? the Oscars for the podcast this week. That's literally how, how can I borrow from the Oscars? How is the Oscars? What is it? How is this like that? That being mindset. That's what I wanted to talk about and like belief mindset, essentially. How is this like that? That's what created a whole bunch of ideas for me for original new content. So that's one of my, one of my favorite little hacks. It can be an object. It can be something random. What I would say with how is this like that? I think I shared this too in the Bite Size Biz lesson, but a, a little hack in terms of not just having ideas, but ideas that are really going to stand out and convert for you at a higher level. I find the more you can connect how is this like that and bring in elements of your personal story and brand to it, the more it's going to be specific to you, your audience and stand out. So the Oscars, for example, I talk a lot about bringing in my acting experience and how my brain works creatively and how that helps me Specifically, that's like one of my superpowers as a coach is I'm a creative thinker and I'm really great at helping my clients slip into the role of their ideal clients and pull out words that sell and help them figure out content ideas and help them figure out how to market in a way that is unique and find that unique edge and get into the role of being a CEO so that they can elevate to six and seven figures, right? This is a skill set I bring from acting. 
so I bring in a lot of how is this like that to my acting to my acting days. I'm sure you've noticed that in my content. You might have a very different how is this like that, but the more you can bring that and tie that into your own personal story and your your own personal story you want people to know about you, the more not only are you going to have those original consistent ideas and that feeling like an artist blend from your own life and from other things, but the more that's also going to really teach people what you want them to know about you and your content. Hopefully that makes sense there. Um, another really easy way I like to play with stealing like an artist is if you're stuck on content, if you have an idea or if you have a concept or you like something from someone else's work, instead of just copying someone's work, play with how can I see this in a new light? How can I flip this upside down? How can I flip this on its head? And see this differently, take a different perspective, give this a different lens. Does that mean that Literally, if I was an artist and painting, right? Instead of just like painting the thing in front of me, could I flip it upside down? Picasso, I don't know, Picasso's creative process, but Picasso basically would take a human, like pull the pull it in different, you know, pull it apart and make it very abstract. That was a different way of a different perspective, even if he was stealing like an artist from an original um, piece of work. I'm not saying this is actually how Picasso did his work, but just since most of us know what Picasso's work is like. So sometimes I will do this through asking myself questions. One of my favorite questions is, and I probably share this in different ways, but is what um, what don't I agree with or what is my perspective uh, that is different from this and what everyone else is saying or what do I wish people knew more of that no one else is saying? I will, I will give myself prompts and questions to, yes, maybe I'm feeling like an artist and I'm studying, right? I maybe want to give credit where credit is due, but also how can I take my own perspective? What is my unique opinion about it? Because then I can have that inspiration point and then I'm transforming it, right? Then I'm doing what Austin Kleon says. I'm not just taking this and then doing the same thing. That is copying, that is stealing, right? I will keep saying that. But for example, if you're watching this live stream and you're like, hmm, I, I want to speak to this, but like, what do I... What don't I agree with what Kim is saying? Or what is Kim saying? And not that we need to all be contrarians for the sake of being contrarian. Like, does this spark something in me that I have a different perspective or I wish people knew over that I don't agree? Like, what's happening in my industry around this topic that I just don't agree with or that I think is wrong? Um, Blue Ocean Strategy, I keep quoting them, but it's such a great book. They have a couple questions, and I think I share this on words that are words that sell masterclass as well, but they have questions that they'll ask, for example, like, what needs to be um, brought way above industry standard? What What is um, not up to industry standard? What um, could be removed by industry standard? But they have a couple core questions. I can find them and um, copy them as a picture under this live stream. But that is a way to take something and to flip it on its head. And that's a way to steal like an artist and to keep having original, consistent new ideas that are going to be specific to your work and that are going to connect with your audience and that are going to convert without actually copying someone. That's using your creative muscles. That is using what Huberman taught us on the Huberman lab, right? That is your divergent and conversion thinking coming together. Um, don't mind me, it's like you got in the brain. Um, and then the the other, well, I said this already here. My um, my other two here are blend and mashup, which is like how can you take it's the idea smoothie we were Sarah and I were talking about, and how can you take multiple ideas and blend them into one? So that is really that is what I think of as the Medici effect where you're taking different backgrounds, you're taking different disciplines and you're finding that convergent point, that point where they intersect to have a new idea or to have a new perspective. That's the last podcast episode as an example where I'm taking basically, you know, three or four different ideas and where do they convert? How does that give me a new blend, a new mashup? So I think that's a fun way to see like an artist. And then I already said this, but I'm just going through my list here because I had five ways to do it, but that is to bring your story or example because no one else has that. And what I would say is with that, I would really think about this, like how can I literally steal like an artist from my own history? I am I'm, I'm really amazed at how sometimes we almost feel like that's cheating. I have so many clients that are like, oh, but like I can't talk about that or like that was from a past life or like, but like that's too easy or, I, or people would want to know that and people want to know that that is literally why you and what you're bringing to the table that no one else has it is also your unique story as it relates to your work i think you know we don't necessarily need to share every personal story but and i'm going to do a live stream on this on how to i think do this in a way that makes sense strategically but bringing these things in is literally something that chat gbt can't do 
right? ChatGPT can create some pretty darn good content, but they cannot share your story. They cannot share those nuances. And this is also then, again, you get to steal like an artist from your own background. Like I'm stealing from my acting days, but I'm not sharing my acting stories because I, like any of you actually want to be actors. I don't think, I mean, Sarah, I think you're probably the only person here, but like who's still acting. Um, my husband in the other room, but most people here, like that's not what you're interested in. But I can steal like an artist from my own history and talk about it in a new and different way to apply it to concepts here. And this is sort of like that, this is like that concept. So those are my, those are a few of my hacks and I'll just run through them again. Um, go have the idea and then go challenge yourself to practice getting inspiration and living life outside of whatever your industry bubble is. Most of us are too myopic and this isn't again to call anyone else but most of us are so wrapped up just in our industry this is actually a challenge when i was acting i was so just in the acting world when i stopped acting i booked a job a friend got me an audition i booked it really easy easily and i realized how much easier that was because i was outside of the acting industry because i went and got a fucking life instead of having my whole life being around acting and i think the same is true for us as business owners we can get so entrenched in the online space if we're business Business coaches just in the business coaching online space if we're relationship coaches right just in the relationship coaching space if we're um cpas right just we can just get so locked into our industry and just learning from other people in our industry and this is where what i really love about the medici effect i think blue ocean strategy talks about this as well but it's really starting to expand your viewfinder and start to fill your inspiration cup and what you're studying from other industries and other disciplines and seeing that's where the best creative new ideas really do come from it's when we're blending when we're making the idea smoothie when we're blending those things together so i really like that is one of my favorite things is I'm going spinning tonight, that is where all my content ideas come from, right? Or I'm going to go for a walk, or I'm going to go to an art gallery, or I'm going to go to a great restaurant, or I'm going to watch the Oscars. I, basically anything that is not business coaching or mindset coaching is what I want to try to fill, fill my mind with. Two is the question, how is this like that? You can play with it with objects, you can play with the things in your life. Um, I don't know that I did the, the best example there with this, but y'all y'all got what I was saying. Um, we could talk about how this is mindset related, right? Like um, if I, I think I could talk about how, you know, when, when I really believe in myself and when I'm feeling really confident, I don't really care if I have lip gloss on or not. This is not necessarily true, but I could just, just say that and how, you know, sometimes this is the thing that gives me that that false sense of confidence but sometimes if you can be it before you are it by putting on a little lip gloss and kind of step into feeling confident then the mindset will follow and that is something i learned from my acting days as well right sometimes just getting into character will help you then become the character so right like that's a this is how that it's we could take a piece of uh, we could take lip gloss and create a piece of content around that um, three, flip something on its head. So take something you're super inspired about, but how can you just flip it upside down, look at it from around the corner, have that, we had some of those questions, look at it differently. Four, blend and mash up. How can you take different ideas and make the idea smoothie? And then five, bring your idea, steal like an artist from your own story and idea. Um, Sarah says, like, I have a real world job and outside activities and all this can be brought into the acting world and it helps you get outside that box and world, like you said. Ig um, oh, and Sarah says, oh, up here, um, she said, I'll, I'll probably go to the acting thing. But these hacks are so helpful and really apply to everything. Thank you for saying that. And yeah, exactly. I think um, acting or writing content, we're, we're both creators, right? Like we are creatives. Everyone in this group is a creative. And I, I think it's exactly that. The more, um, I, I love that you're, you're, backing up what I said the the more my husband is acting again and I think what's so great is he stopped acting for a second and we, we've both talked about how we, we just have such richer lives to bring to roles now because we just have more of a life outside of the acting world and I love that you're saying that I I'm positive you've always been super talented Sarah and I know bringing those outside things in only add to the idea smoothie only add to the depth and the richness of the work you're doing so I'm glad that that resonates. For everyone listening, I hope this is helpful for you. Just as a recap, those were the five hacks. Let me know if this is useful. I'm happy to do more stuff on creativity or hacks. I personally love it. I personally think as business owners, creative thinking is actually one of our, I think it's just such an essential skill set. And I think it's such an edge if you're able to 
leverage to harness to expand your creative thinking that that type of thinking in your mind i think that is something that will just help you get further and further ahead in business not that it's a competition but in terms of your longevity in business and your sustainability so let me know that's something y'all want to hear more about a reminder what we want to really think about is yes consistency with content yes quantity really over quality or quantity is what leads to quality playing with originality and that creativity and seeing how you can bring in those new ideas but to really be mindful of the difference between copying and stealing like an artist we are all for stealing like an artist that is literally how i have had so much content and how i continue to have content and ideas but seeing stealing like an artist really is that originality it is making something new out of everything you have learned you're building upon it like sarah so beautifully said versus copying which is we just don't want to do that right and if you have copied someone we can have some grace and compassion for ourselves for others we can understand where that comes from but take it down um let's all stop the copying thing we can have compassion and grace for others but also if you've been copied permission to hold really strong boundaries around that and then a reminder if you want to join me for more of a legal conversation tomorrow on instagram at 9 a.m i'm going to have that conversation with amy oh, gosh i really hope i'm saying her name right nisam she is the owner and a lawyer um, of artful contracts we're going to be talking about copying how to protect your intellectual property and you know just what what rights you have we would love to have you join us for that conversation i'll make sure i pin a replay somewhere as well because i have not been doing those we've had a couple of those industry chats and if you're listening to this and you want support if you're hearing me talk about this um, oh sarah says yes totally can back it up too um and if you're listening to this y'all and you're like you know what i would like some help tapping into my creative ideas. I hear this and I think I'm not creative. First of all, everyone is creative. Everyone can be creative. I, I know not everyone identifies that way, but if you work with me, I will help you stretch into believing you are creative in those ideas. If you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I feel like everyone's copying my work and I'm not showing up. I'm not owning my work because I've got trash around that or I'm worried people are going to judge me or like I'm coming up with ideas, but I'm worried about taking up space and people not liking it or getting rejected or I just can't generate enough or I don't know how to strategically speak to some of the things you were talking about kim in terms of messaging so that i'm not just putting out consistent content but so it's actually converting and so i know how to sell on the back end this is literally what i support my clients with i'm really good at what i do i'm not saying that as lip service this is just what i've dedicated pretty much my whole life to whether it's acting or my background in psychology or working in the advertising world and now as a coach for over seven years i would love to support you i will drop a discovery call link below completely free and we can chat about how I can support you. And then I'll be back next week with another fun topic for y'all. Thank you for being here. Thank you, Sarah, for all the comments and I love you all so much and I'll see you next week.